What is up, YouTube? So today, I'm gonna break down a fill. You all asked for this on Instagram. I said, do you want a transcription or do you want me to break down a fill? So today's a little bit of both because this fill came from a transcription I was doing of Jairo Ubiano. I hope I'm saying that right. I can't roll my R's. My wife makes fun of me for it all the time. Um, my name is pronounced like this, Jairo Ubiano. But if you don't know who Jairo Ubiano is, you should definitely go to Instagram and follow him immediately. I'll link to his YouTube. All that will be in the description. He's an amazing drummer. And I was recently transcribing something of his, and when I came across this fill, I was like, oh, the world needs to know about this fill because it has so many things that I love in it. Oh, and before I teach you this fill, let me first say thank you all so much. Uh, I recently just passed a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and that's not a lot to a lot of people, but it's a ton to me because like a year ago, I had a hundred subscribers. I just, it's amazing to me that so many of you are along for the journey along for me learning about how to use YouTube, how to talk to you all, how to interact with you all. It's just amazing. This platform is so cool. And I'm just so thankful that all of you are here. So thank you for hitting subscribe and being my internet friends. That is very cool. And I can't thank you enough. Back to the lesson. This fills 16th note triplets. And I feel like all the fills I do are 16th note triplet fills, but they're pretty cool, so why, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? That's what they say. Okay, so, 16th note triplets, what are they? So, in a normal, you know, groove of 4-4, four, four, we have four quarter notes, one, two, three, four, and all you're gonna do with each of those quarter notes is subdivide it by six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, right? You're just playing six notes per quarter note. The second reason I love this fill is because it, it starts on an accent and snare drum, and that's kind of unique. Things that are really predictable typically aren't as cool as things that are super unpredictable and out of nowhere and um, not what we usually hear. Continuing, more stuff I like about this fill is that it incorporates a open hi-hat closing onto a snare drum, so this kind of thing. This is a thing that I, that I I really like it when stuff does that. I really like when fills incorporate an open hi-hat to a closed thing. Um, I frequently use that. It just adds this very tight uh, final closure choking out and then hitting a snare drum and it's like, whoa, okay. The coolest part of this fill is that it exists. You can use it as a 16th note triplet fill that maintains a backbeat. And what I mean by that is during the fill, you can still maintain a strong two and four pulse so that the groove never gets lost, right? So many fills that we do are a total departure from timekeeping, a total departure from the groove we're doing, which is cool and sometimes necessary and this, that, and the other, that's great. But the cool thing about this fill is that you can maintain two and four so that even though you're playing a fill, it still feels groovy and it still feels like you're not uh, departing from the groove, you're merely making the groove fancier. Okay, so let me play this fill super slow and then we'll break it down. So the sticking for this fill is a reverse six stroke roll. So a typical six stroke roll is right, left, left, right, right, left. And this, we're totally reversing it. It starts on the left hand. So it's left, right, right, left, left, right. Okay? That's another reason I like it. It starts on the left hand. And when you start things on the opposite hand that we usually do, again, it builds in regardless of what you're doing. Because it's starting with the left hand, it just lends itself to a bunch of... Uh, orchestrations and different patterns and different ways it lays on the drum set totally differently than when a lot of the stuff we usually play because it starts on the left hand which frees us up to play things and orchestrate things differently than we usually do which is another reason I like this fill is that because 
just the very nature of it starting on the left hand means that it's going to breed um, variations and stuff that we don't usually hear. So, starts on the left on the snare drum, two on the tom, two on the snare drum, and then the open hi-hat. So very slowly, that is left, right, right, left, left, open hi-hat with the right hand. And then we just start it over. And you gotta make sure, again, one of the parts I like about it is that it's an open hi-hat to a closed hi-hat with the snare drum. So you gotta be sure when you repeat that six note grouping that you are closing the hi-hat with the snare drum. So I'll play the three six note groupings that we're supposed to in this fill. I'll play those at a slow tempo. And then all you have to do is end on beat four, you're ending with an accented snare drum. That's it. So that would sound like this. That's it. That's the first fill. It's those three six note groupings, accented snare drum only on beat four, and then you're done. So, in the context of a groove, this is how that sounds. Now, that's the fill. Very cool, but I'm gonna do two more variations that I think are kind of useful when you're breaking this down. So, the second variation is going to be where you play, instead of stopping and just having one snare drum on beat four, you actually are going to play the entire measure. So you're gonna fill up this entire measure of 16th note triplets. So we're gonna play the first three beats, that left, right, right, left, left, right. We're gonna play that three times, and then we're gonna do it again on beat four. The only difference is instead of on the very last 16th note triplet of the measure, instead of it being a right hand with the hi-hat, we're going to have it just be a kick drum by itself. So we're gonna play the three groupings exactly like written in the first fill we were working on. And then the very last grouping is just going to be left, right, right, left, left, kick. And what that does is it frees our right hand to be able, instead of being busy playing a um, open hi-hat, it's going to leave our right hand free for that very last beat to get to a crash cymbal. So that's the first variation, playing the entire measure instead of stopping on beat four. And then on the second variation from this original fill, what I want to do is I want to start this, like I said, it's a cool fill because it builds in the backbeat feel. So we're going to play on beat one, we're just going to have standard kick, kick on one, eighth note hi-hats, then we're going to start the fill on beat two, and we're going to play the right, left, left, uh, left, right, right, left, left, hi-hat left, right, right, left, left, hi-hat. And then we're gonna stop on beat four. And I wrote out a snare drum on beat four and then the and on the hi-hat and then uh on the ghosted snare drum. That's just one variation. Really what I'm just trying to accomplish in the second variation is starting this fill on beat two and ending it on beat four. And that's really cool because very frequently we have fills that last a whole measure, but those aren't always the most practical. This, only having two beats where we're playing this through, gives us a variation that will be very um, quick to get in, get out, and it all starts on beat two and ends on beat four, which is very unique. And I think that you, know, you pulling this out in some kind of musical situation will kind of make people's head turn. Not because it's the most complicated, fastest, whatever, but because it's just a cool variation that starts and ends where we don't really expect it. So that would sound like this.
there you have it. You have the original fill, and then you have two variations. Follow... Jairo Ubiano. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. It's so hard to say. I might even overlay audio of you saying your name because I actually asked Jairo before I did this lesson. I sent him a message and said, hey, how do you pronounce your name? And I'm glad I did because I never would have pronounced it like um, it's properly pronounced. Follow him on Instagram, follow him on YouTube, subscribe to him on YouTube. In the description, there's a link. You can download this sheet music so you can start playing these variations, trying it out yourself. Remember, this is only one orchestration. You can keep it all in the hi-hat. You can keep it all between the snare and the hi-hat. You can, you can move this around. These are only one fill and two variations of an endless possibility of how you orchestrate it. So I'll play a couple of those examples on the way out. I'll see you in the next video. Seriously, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Visit the link to download the sheet music, and I'll see you in the next lesson.